A new season of the GT4 European Series begins at Monza this weekend with another amazing entry of 46 cars representing uh, all the best brands of GT4 such as Mercedes, Toyota, Audi, Aston Martin, Porsche, BMW, Chevrolet, McLaren. It is a long, long list and a very impressive lineup of drivers with a real mix of experience and of backgrounds as well. The sun is shining, it's a pretty chilly morning at Monza, but the teams, after two free practice sessions yesterday, eager to get out onto the circuit. And uh, this session will determine the grid for the first of the two races. Uh, every car bar one has two drivers, and the qualifying is quite straightforward. You do the qualifying time for the race that you will start. So the drivers here start the first race, which is today. The second drivers will start the uh, second race, which is tomorrow's race. The Monza circuit, of course, the home of the Italian Grand Prix through the uh, park not far from Milan. And with the long, fast straight, the run down to the Parabolica and the fast section two down to the Varianti Ascari. It's a circuit the drivers love. Ten turns in total, uh, just under uh, six kilometres long. And uh, drivers then keen to get out onto the circuit, lay some rubber down as well and see what that it can do in terms of lap time. It's going to be very crowded indeed. Uh, uh, trying to manage the traffic will be part of the battle here. That's just a snapshot of what it's like in the pit lane. And as the cars roll out, ready to do battle, uh, the eager teams will try and get their cars either out first or out last, I would have thought, to try and be in a bit of clear air. But it's going to be virtually impossible to do that. Uh, there were 43 in the GT3 session earlier, and the road was almost an endless stream of cars. Uh, add even more to it. Well, you can imagine for yourselves what it's going to be like. There is the Luca Bosco O'Neill Mutt. Mercedes, as the green flag is now waved, a little bit later, just by a couple of minutes after the earlier sessions have been running slightly behind. But the cars now go pouring out onto the circuit. And although this is, in theory, a support race to the Fanacek GT World Challenge Europe, for these teams it is deadly serious indeed. And it's another of those championships where, with every car, you find a name, you find a driver. Oh, it's him. Uh, he's here. And it is a really interesting entry, to say the very least, of drivers that are GT4 regulars, new to GT racing, new to the circuit, new teams. Uh, there, for example, is uh, Andrea Benazé, sharing with Wilfried Casabon in the uh, Toyota GR Supra GT4, the CMR car, because we saw CMR uh, in the championship last year. And that car will go out in uh, a moment. You have then... Uh, Robert Consani in the Audi out first, just ahead of Thomas Hodler. Pascal Bachmann is another man to keep an eye to. So too Clement Zeiler, who uh, we saw go very strongly in GT4 a couple of years ago. Number 17, V8 Racing Chevrolet, Jot Rapange. He was quick last year as he uh, became more used to GT4 cars. So uh, it's going to be a short, sharp session, that is for sure. It's only 20 minutes long, so by the time you've got an outlap done, you've got a flying lap to get your tyres up to temperature, and then uh, you, you're hard into it. You don't get terribly many laps, so uh, the quick drivers will be out on the toes straight away.
star in the UK last year. John Luc Bobelik, great enthusiast. Nicola Goma, great enthusiast. Uh, we've seen regularly in both GT4 and GT3 racing. They are on track. One question mark is over number eight because that is shown as Stefan Lemre, although Antoine Potti, I thought, was the driver that was meant to be in the car for this first session. But the timing's green, says Stefan Lemre, the very quick journalist racer. So uh, times will start to come through at the end of this lap. In terms of uh, absolute best in sectors, the star thus far is Bailey Boise, graduate of the Ginetta Junior scene in the UK, as Eric Clement turns into the Parabolica. Now, it's good to have the Audis back because there were quite a uh, shortage of them really last year even the year before back in, in 2019 even I think we only had one for a time so uh, a, a bit more uh, interest being shown in the four rings so Bailey boys in goes quickest on the two minutes 2.714 from uh, Francesco Guerra the silver graded Italian driver and then to the very top defeating all of them goes Amadeo Pampanini with the 718 Porsche Cayman uh, two minutes, 1.071, and then even faster still uh, goes number 45, which is Hugo Conde with the Aston Martin. Two minutes, 0 0.396, times are tumbling, because their number 30 is in. That is the Loris Cabiru and Vincent Beltois Alpine. Alpine, a great looking car, and of course it's won with its own European one-mate championship. As you see, 89 then head into the... Retafilio Chicane, 89 being the AGS events. Nicolas Gomar and Eric Hare, Aston Martin. Nicolas Gomar, class champion last year, experienced racer. Clement Zeiler is up into third as the times continue to shuffle almost with every passing car now. Number 12 has been off at turn two and cut the chicane, we understand, that being Cembalo Bazi. And Antoine Potti now is corrected as the driver aboard. Uh, number eight, so all is good. Driver list tallies with what we expected, and uh, Antoine Potti will be one to watch as the session unravels, that is for certain. So it is at the moment Hugo Conde who is the fastest by six tenths of a second, and expect the time to continue to drop uh, as the rubber goes down, as the tyre pressures go up as well. Fuel load gets a little bit less, likewise. But with so many cars, it is absolutely vital that you start at the front, and it's going to be interesting to see when we get to the first race what drama we have into the first chicane. Uh, absolute best in the middle sector then, set by Nico Gomar here. Nicola Gomar in the Aston, rumbling his way now out of the Valiante Ascari. To the top of the times now goes 88, which is the Aka ASP Paul Everard Mercedes. One minute, 59.729, almost half a second uh, quicker than now 27, that's gone up to second fastest, Constantine Lachenauer, with another of the AGS events. Uh, Aston Martin. That then changes again because up to second goes number five, uh, Thomas Hodier. But Hugo Conde continues to be at the top of the times. GT4, the regulation that is run for the French GT Championship. So, not surprisingly, many of the teams of the drivers come from the French series anyway. Uh, that's become very, very strong. Yellow flag waves down at the Retifilio because somebody's had a moment. Let's try and work out who and where they've got to. We're witness marks off the road. Well, you saw the yellow flags coming into the chicane, but either the car has got away or it's managed to spin itself out of harm's way. A very, very busy road coming up to the second chicane. So traffic management is going to be key to all of this. And again, you do your very best, suddenly come across a yellow or a slow car recovering, and it completely compromises your lap. Uh, Nico Gomar had gone quickest, but now Jamie Caroline goes to the top of the times then. So after a very, very impressive season in GT4, Aston Martin to the TF Sport last year, now for Mercedes, and he's done a 57.7, so he's eight tenths quicker than Nicola Gomar currently is. Fourth fastest is Hugo Conde, and he is the one there going slowly, keeping out of everybody's way in the Aston Martin as the cars there turn up through the Lesmos. Some, you could argue, going slowly because they've got a problem. Others, perhaps, going slowly just to bail out of a lap and to try and get clear track space. Jean-Luc Bobelik is a man on a mission. Trouble is, he's mired in traffic. He's gone green in sector one and green in sector two. There he is, uh, but only 23rd fastest right now. He should be an improver. Jean-Luc Bobelik, very, very experienced. Races both GT3 and GT4 cars, as you see, but uh, he is going to be one to watch. And his co-driver is Jim Pla, who, again, we've always known he's quick from single-seaters and GT3. So. Uh, 
a, a, a combination to keep an eye to. A report of a spin for number four, Robert Consigny. So that was a turn two, he spun and continued. That would explain in part why we have that yellow flag. The car did rejoin as Jean-Luc Bobelink then comes now up towards the timing line. So the Mercedes AMG GT4 will break the beam. It shouldn't improve, well, only to 25th because he dropped to 33rd anyway with other people going quickly. So Jamie Caroline, Bailey Voy is in, and then Francesco Guerra becomes the top three. Mercedes, McLaren, Mercedes. Antoine Potti's Toyota is up to fifth and a big, big wobble under braking there look from the Porsche number 26 that is Alexander Hartwig sharing for Allied Racing with uh, Joel Mathias got an absolute best first sector coming from Gus Bowers number 32 for United Auto Sports and the McLaren and he's got to try and beat a 57.7 to get up near the top of the times yet to do a lap uh, amongst others uh, Alexander Hartwig and Ruben Del Sartre as you look at 26 Porsche again heading over the kerb the car that's had a drama earlier on in the weekend looking at the fact that one of its doors doesn't rather match but uh, Alexander Hartwig now trying to go for a lap time here that side looks okay the other side looks rather different but Hartwig presses on Jacques Mathias will do the second stint in the race he will do the first stint in the second race therefore he will qualify next but Jamie Caroline led by 10 from Bailey Boys in topping the times at the moment. The other one to keep an eye on is Gus Bowers, as I say, and he's done an absolute and a personal best across sectors one and two. Who else has just improved? Marcus Lundstrass up to sixth fastest now. As riding the curb is Alexander Hartwig. He's getting very committed to all of this, no question about it. Rattles up over the curb, now down towards the Parabolica. You can see the Toyota in the middle of all of that. That's the car of Piotr Chodzen. And Antoine Potti's Toyota goes quickest of all, 157.275 now. That's Alexander Hartwig coming down through the Parabolica once more, up towards the timing line. The Gus Bowers lap Rob run rambled because it was a slow last sector, like about a second and a half down in the last sector, so the Hope for improvement never came. 718 is up into second. You perhaps don't need to ask what number 718 is. It is the 718 cable, similar to this shape. Uh, Ivan Yakona is the man at the wheel of it, and he has just done an absolute best in the first sector. Up to third now, another of the Porsches, 22 for Allied Racing, is uh, Joel Strum, and he has done a 57 and a half. So, as you might expect, as tyres get hotter and fuel load comes down, so the car's picking up pace nicely now. So Potti, Giacomo, Caroline, Strum uh, is the top four. Fifth is Xavier Joveras, race winner last year in the Mercedes. Again, with Luke Ivanov as his co-driver. And then sixth fastest, number 42, which is the Santa Lot junior team, Fabian Marshall Audi, shared with very, very quick Greg Gilbert. So there's a lot to look positive about, certainly, the GT4 European Series. Last year, the entry was around about half of this, but the teams that did have to back out we're all saying we'll be back next year and they've made good on that promise uh, because 47 initially 46 going into qualifying is a very very impressive number indeed the bmw there which was the car to beat a couple of years ago indeed even at imola last year for the opening rounds of the championship bmws were very very strong but uh, not quite so many of them and it's interesting as well that much of the dutch influence in gt4 has uh, rather been overshadowed now overtaken by lots and lots of french teams and drivers coming into the championship instead a legacy as i said earlier of that very successful french championship there is the 718 718 it's gone from gold to the sort of silver and gunmetal colors for ivan jacoma this year the century porsche ticino 718 new co-driver for him as well because max busnelli is the second driver and uh, ivan jacoma certainly one to watch in the very attractive Cayman. There's, of course, a one-make series for the 718 Cayman Club Sports 2, one in uh, Central Europe, one in the UK, sporting the British GT Championship, and occasional rounds of the British Touring Car Championship. So more and more of these Caymans hitting the tracks as Jacoba presses on. To the top, though, now, as you see from the timing tower, has gone Joel Strum, the young German driver then, now by half a second over Antoine Potti, and that means that Jacoma here is down to third in the times.
So there, with five minutes to go, cars off the road. That's got a kind of toyota -y shape to it, I fear. And uh, rejoining is Piotr Hodson's Toyota. Why has he done that? Middle of the Lesmo curve. So Piotr Hodson does rejoin. As far as I can see, the car's undamaged. How did he get there? Uh, did he fall or was he pushed? Looks like it was all self-induced. Yes, runs out wide, rattles over the curb, and eventually goes one way and goes the other and off into the gravel it sides. There is Antoine Potty, three tenths of a second down. We've got a lap time being cancelled, incidentally, for number 74, Enzo Juli, which is for the dreaded track limits. And Potty is about to incur the wrath of the officials as he completely outbreaks himself going into the second chicane there, runs off the road and skips back on again. So Antoine Potty, second fastest, compromises that sector, compromises that lap. So the Supra will have to go again. There should be time, four and three quarter minutes of the session to go. Toyota's almost bookending the times, second and penultimate, so Potty second, and after his spin, Piotr Hodzen is penultimate now in the order. Number 30, Alpine, is Loris Caviru, the CMR run car, busy squad with cars in GT3 and GT4 across the weekend. Uh, Antoine Potty's last lap cancelled for track limits, well, I think we saw the reason for why, he was being warned about track limits anyway, uh, but uh, they're going off the road. Fifth quickest currently is Louis Cabirou. Comes down through the Parabolica. He will squeeze at least two more laps out of the session, I would have thought. The Alpine absolutely on the giddy limit, though, as he snakes underneath him. Heads up towards the line. And is this going to be an improvement? Sectors would suggest not. He did go quicker last time. And on that lap, stays fifth fastest. In terms of top speed, Bailey Voisin is the quickest in a straight line at the moment. 267 kilometres an hour from Joel Strum, who is the man that's got pole position. And then uh, Alex Hartvig and Ivan Jacoma next. So three Porsches chasing after the McLaren. You could argue they're good at aero-friendly shape. Certainly the McLaren cut through the air very, very effectively. And Bailey Voisin up from Ginetta Junior Racing going very nicely indeed. There, heading into the Parabolica, number four Audi. That's the team speed car, Robert Consani, entry. And Robert Consani is 15th quickest as he heads up towards the timing line. Three minutes on the clock still. GT4 without a grunt and go V8, would it? For V8 Racing, Yacht Rapage and Time and Navarre's back together again after their good efforts of last season. And the ground shaking, ear splitting Chevrolet growls its way up towards the Variante Ascari into the chicane, turning through the left, through the right, through the left again. Ascari cornering speed through the chicane for cars of the Silver Cup. The Alpine is the quickest, 156 kilometres an hour. And Robert Consani, even though he's quite a long way down overall, only 16th, second fastest through that particular section of the circuit. Fascinating that. Gus Boas uh, is fifth. Joel Strum fourth, but of course he's the man with the best overall lap time. So interesting to see how certain cars work through corners relative to in a straight line. Just over a minute and a half of Q1 still to go. There is number 17, then the Yacht Rapange Chevrolet. Good BMW fight there, it's almost like a touring car battle. Three of them together as they come up towards the Variante Ascari, just ahead of Alex Hartvig. As I say, with that rather patched up right hand side to the Porsche, but uh, Hartvig getting on with the job quite nicely now. And another of the Caymans, 45th in the times, Dario Cerati, the septuagenarian. Two minutes, 1.363 for the uh, Autolando Sport team, and there, 
It's almost like a rolling start coming down to the Parabolica. Some going slowly, perhaps heading for the pit lane to give their team and their co-driver more chance of getting ready for Q2. Others still pushing on. Another of the Porsches there is number 37, the all-white one of Andre uh, Solikovsky, and he's the soloist, so he gets an extra 10 seconds in the pit stop. Number 10 Porsche is that of Paolo Gnemi. Over the line. And 23rd that car currently is. He'll get one more lap out of the session if he wants it, but the flag will be out soon. There is Louis Cabiru, still pressing on, still fifth quickest in the very pretty little Alpine. GT4 racing after there being a slow burn for many, many seasons. Really has blossomed over the last, what, four or five years. There's the flag, session ended, Q1 at an end. Uh, more and more of the manufacturers building GT4 cars rather than them being at the instigation of tuners, which is how it initially started. So you would take your car to a nominated, homologated tuner, they would make it into a GT4 race car. Now you buy it direct out of the factory uh, with all the spares package and the infrastructure that goes with it. And it's uh, certainly transformed the way the GT4 racing looks. So the provisional grid for the first race set. But a very impressive effort by Joel Strum to go quickest by half a second from Antoine Potty, who is no slouch, rally driver as well as racer Antoine Potty. And the bulk of the car is actually at the pointy end of the grid, already in the pits, because that way you're buying a little bit more time to do anything to the car that you might need to get your co-driver sorted for Q2, including there in the case of the number eight Toyota Stefan Leveret. The Belgian driver takes over from Antoine Potty. Three McLaren, Bailey Moyes in now gives way to Charlie Fagg, another driver that came from Ginetta Juniors into GT4 racing two, three seasons ago and uh, has done probably the bulk of his racing, it's fair to say, in recent seasons in mainland Europe, but uh, the British driver very quick. So he replaces Bailey Moyes in, who was fourth at the end of Q1, so that's standalone session, standalone grids. There is the Mercedes being pushed back, ready to go. So a quick look at how we stand at the end of the first part of qualifying. It is Joel Strum for Porsche, Allied Racing's effort that is quickest, sharing with Nikolai Moller Madsen, Antoine Potti second for Toyota, and then the Porsche of Ivan Jacoma uh, third fastest. Bailey Voisins for Claren, fourth, fifth is the Loris Cabiru Alpine, and sixth fastest Marcus Lungstrass, seventh is Jamie Caroline's Mercedes, Ruben Del Sard, eighth after being bit late to get the time early on. Uh, he took a while to, to do his first proper lap time. Ninth, Gus Boas, McLaren and 10th, Xavier Overas, who you can argue ought to be a little bit higher up the order than that, but uh, going strongly nonetheless. And on it scrolls with, uh, as ever, in GT4, Pro-Am, Am and Silver Cup cars to keep an eye on. Robert Consani, Hugo Conde, who was quick right at the start, ending up 17th, sharing with the former single-seater racer, the Indian driver, Akhil Rabindra. The drivers that are in that second column are those that take over the cars now, going into Q2. And again, uh, a 46-strong entry on track in just over five minutes' time. It's going to be a very busy circuit indeed. At the bottom of the times, at the end of uh, Q1, Dario Cerati in the Porsche. So Porsches bookend the times out of all of that. Other drivers that you could argue should have been a bit higher up include Jean-Luc Bobelic, only 34th. Uh, Mauro Ricci's experienced with San Borgerman, uh, but he too is a long way down. And um, Piotr Hodson, we know because he had his little off, that uh, rather cost him time early on. Right, Joel Strum then is the driver that is topping the times by 0.558 of a second. So he's done what he can do, and he's got a quick co-driver in Nikolai Mollamadsen as well, staying with Allied Racing for a second season. So you've got to say that the 22 Porsche looks very, very strong Indeed, the Danish driver, Nikolai Mollemadsen. There, a little bit of sweeping to be done uh, from the marshals to get the gravel off the road. Right, let's hear from Joel Strum then, because that was a great effort. He's with Gemma Scott. So we saw a brief glimpse of your smile as you took your helmet off and put the mask on. Great session for you. Yeah, it was a pretty good lap and a pretty good session. Uh, I'm really happy to, uh, with the results. 
and now I'm looking forward to the race. Can you convert that speed, uh, pace and into race pace? That's the plan for the race, and I hope it's going to work, but I think it's, pretty, it's looking pretty good. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, you take Joel Strum's pace in isolation, plus Nikolai Mollemadsen for the other part of the race. Yes, they do look very strong indeed, no question about it. A uh, quick look at the highlights of the first part of qualifying then, as the uh, drivers in Q2 get ready. Even on the outlap, people were getting a little bit carried away, coming out of the second chicane down at the Retifilio. Complete absence of braking, having to take to the escape road there to avoid making contact with anything. More and more curve are being used as the session wore on. Big, big slide from Antoine Potti, but he was absolutely committed, hustling on in the Toyota, the similar car of Piotr Hodson. Rather got it wrong. A big spin coming through the Lesmo bends, but he was able to carry on in the session, albeit with time being lost. Potti himself had another moment, this time going into the second of the chicanes. But uh, Joel Sturm had done the work, and uh, Joel Sturm ending that session as the fastest driver and uh, taking the top time by just over half a second. So uh, Joel Sturm and uh, Nikolai Bollemadsen currently looking very strong indeed. Dean McDonald now takes over from Gus Boas in the McLaren. So just a couple of minutes or so before the cars are allowed down into the fast lane, Dennis Fetzer will take over number 20 Porsche now. So Konstantin Dressler drove in Q1. You look at the majority of the drivers as you see their photographs coming up in the Silver Cup, especially more and more young guns coming into GT racing. The BMW, the W and D racing team car, Paolo Maloney gives way to uh, Massimiliano Tresoldi, both, of course, running in the AM Cup, in which they were very competitive last year. Quick clean of the screen, and there is number 70 of uh, Jean-Luc Daria, ready to go, taking over from Jamie Caroline. So the Swiss driver gets set. Very shortly, they're all going to go pouring out onto the circuit, ready to argue over clear track space. There's the number 15 Mercedes that now will be taken over by Yuk uh, Ibanef. And Luke Ibanez then will, I should have thought, be up near the pointy end of the grid because he and uh, Xavier Joveras, very, very rapid drivers indeed. So Ibanez to take over. And in the background there, nestling ready to go, is 87, Jim Pla. He could be a good shot for pole position here, uh, knowing his uh, good pace. So we're one minute away from the start of Q2 for the GT4 European Series, this opening brace of races in the championship. And they're 33, which is now going to be son, Anthony Hodson, ready to go. The SBC Sport Management entered Toyota. So the uh, drivers are ready. The officials will give the signal in a few moments that they can make their way down the fast lane, that the lights can go green at the end of the pit road. The race is, of course, at one hour in duration. Mandatory pit stop. And the pit window between 25 and 35 minutes. 95 seconds, line to line, is the pit stop time, unless you're doing tyres, in which case it's a much longer stop. And there's an extra 10 seconds for uh, Sorokov because he drives solo. Right. Clacks and sounds, and out they dash. <laughs> so uh, some on their toes, others being a little bit more relaxed about it, but almost are coming together in the pit lane as some were more committed than others to get away. Number 21 is good to go, that being the Neil Stevenart Santa Lock Audi. Well, Neil Stevenart, very, very quick indeed. We saw him in GT3. KTMs a few years ago, as well as in uh, Audis and GT3 and GT4. So Stephen Art will be one to watch, no question. The Audi goes down the pit road then. BMW for the Turkish Borosan Automotive Motorsport team. That is then the 
uh, Cembal Obazi and uh, Beke Bessler entry. Hendrik Pedersen takes over from Marcus Lundstrass. He'll be good to go in a moment in the Helipadjid Racing 1 Aston Martin. That car being held, really, until the pit lane has emptied, and then he might be able to go at the back of the queue, so uh, there's relatively little traffic around it. But you can see there, some have got cars all around them, front, back. It's a very crowded house indeed. There's the McLaren through for the United Auto Sports team, the Richard Dean, Zach Brown squad. And uh, 33, Anthony Hudson now at the wheel. That's a car that didn't really shine in Q1. Let's see what happens in Q2 now. So at the moment, the circuit looking almost calm, uh, but uh, behind, it's going to get very, very busy indeed. So as the Charlie Fag McLaren comes now through the Parabolica, makes the run up towards the timing line. Charlie having gone well here two, three seasons ago, comes up past the pits, and we'll start to get an idea shortly of what lap times pan out like. Back over the kerb, and the McLaren then now accelerates onto a proper flying lap. So this will be the first opportunity to see what the times are going to be like in this session. The first one uh, to do a, a time, supposedly, especially in Bode, but uh, it's a slowish one. So there is Charlie Fagg then, setting purple sectors really by dint of being the first man through the beams at the moment. Again, just like in GT3 terms, GT4 has a balance of performance as well. And although inevitably some teams and drivers will argue it's gone against them, largely it works out very, very well indeed, which is why you've got this great mix of car. No matter what configuration, what engine size, it's uh, not an easy art to master, but it looks like it has been done pretty effectively given A, the strength of the entry, and B, how competitive different brands all are at the moment. We'll know out of this set of drivers, though, who is the best in a little under... 20 minutes time as Charlie Fagg wriggles out of the Valley Anti Ascari and ahead of him is a whole wave of traffic. There are more cars still leaving the pit lane, in fact, so the road's just going to get busier and busier and busier now. Some are still weaving around, ready to start a flying lap. As you can see, headlights are flashing. Charlie Fagg is coming up towards the end of his and has to get uh, pretty aware of what the Mercedes were up to there, just getting out of the way in time. But uh, some of them, as you can see, on a start-up lap, trying to get the tyres up to temperature. Charlie Fagg already at the end of the first flying lap then. So they should put him top. Whether he'll stay there remains to be seen. But as he breaks the beam, what does he do then? A 157.265 to go fastest currently. Uh, Roman Ainetta, 2 minutes 0 0.382 to go second then. So Charlie Fagg coping with the traffic pretty admirably there, actually, to go fastest of all in the early stages of this session as there Anthony Hudson comes up out of the Parabolica. Akira Rabindra's Aston briefly third and then now up to third fastest goes number 90 of uh, Jody Vullo. It's another of the Mercedes, Jody Vullo. Anthony Hudson third fastest, very, very impressive. So you could argue a real contrast in terms of time between him and his dad. There's a big lockup from the Aston ahead, which is the number 89, uh, Eric Hare car. He's taken over from Nicola Goma and almost drops it, coming down towards the Retifilio chicane. Thirty-three. Then Anthony Hodgson goes by. Kuroi for Team Speedcar, another of the young guns of French GT racing, comes out of the second. There's a moment, a big, big lose from the Aston in the background. Rally crossing its way towards the road. That might have been the Paul Tysgen's car. 
which has got back onto the circuit and scatters gravel everywhere, going to make the road slippery for those next behind as they encounter that part of the racetrack. But that was a big, big moment for the street art racing car. Seemed to arrive there with a huge amount of speed, and a huge amount of optimism as well. Anyway, survives the moment, gets away with it. Out of the Parabolica comes Kuroi, up towards the line. Gets ahead of Max Tresoldi in the BMW as he does so. Uh, Charlie Fagg is still the fastest, by the way, by 1.4 seconds from Akira Ravindra. So it's a very big margin that he's got. Number 10 Porsche up towards the timing line. This now in the hands of Ricardo Pera. Personal best and an absolute best. This is going to be a good lap. How good? Let's see as he goes quickest of all then. So 1.56.987 puts Ricardo Pera onto the top of the times, 0.278 of a second quicker than Charlie Fagg. Big knock of the curb coming into the Retafilio, but uh, Pera gets away with it. Up to third fastest now, number 75, Auto Lando Sport Porsche of uh, Ricardo Canzian. O'Neill Muth fourth, Akira Rabindra fifth, and sixth fastest now, number 14, Santa Lock Audi of uh, Roy Mayhaus, the Israeli driver. All right, that's Charlie Fagg then trying to find. Uh, 0.279 of a second to go back to the top of the times while well, he's a bit down in sector one but he's done an absolute best in sector two so the traffic went against him a little bit i think at the start of this lap but if it's a really good third sector add it all together nicely and it might pan out his way we'll see because as he comes now down to the parabolica once more turns through the corner Um, what does he do? He's got to try and beat a 56.987. Charlie Fagg up towards the timing line, goes through. And that lap is quicker. It is a 56.683. So he's back onto pole position then by three tenths of a second, Charlie Fagg, training the top time with Ricardo Perra. There's a Toyota trying to have a moment ahead of him, and it's on the verge of one. as number 75 Porsche currently in the hands of Ricardo Canzian comes through. This is the car that is fifth quickest. The well, last thing Charlie Fagg needed was that Toyota having a, a wobble ahead of him. But hopefully, the situation has cleared itself. Kanzian was good in sector one, but down in sector two. He's on the limit, though. You can see the car squirming as it comes into the Parabolica once more. Three, as Dean McDonald now goes quickest in the sister uh, United Auto Sports McLaren. 23 is Charlie Fagg, but uh, we're watching him, but it's the sister car that's sneaked its way by 61 thousandths to the top ahead of Ricardo Perra. So Charlie Fagg got his top time back and has fallen or been pushed back down to third ahead of Hugo Chevalier, uh, O'Neill Muth, and a big, big moment over the curb there from Charlie. Certainly pressing on, but has that spoiled the effort? Let's just see. Car seemed to not only whack the curb but almost get away from him but I think he's managed to hang on to it whether or not he can regroup from that we'll see but actually he's down in both sector one and sector two so it's not going to be uh, a lap with an improvement the last lap time for number four which is Benjamin Lariche has been cancelled Steve Burns the race director identifying track limits for that Dean McDonald, who was a very handy GT racer in GT4 all season, comes through to the end of the lap with a personal best but in sector one, but being slightly down in sector two. Uh, GT4 champion in the British GT Championship in 2019, Tom Canning, another of the Aston Martin drivers here for Mirage Racing, the French team sharing this car with uh, Ruben Del Sartre. 
Ruben drove in the first session. Tom Canning, who's been busy in the British GT Esports Championship of late, comes out of the Variante Ascari, heads down towards the Parabolica. Ruben Del Sartre, who did Q1, uh, his father, if you have a long memory, you might remember Rafael Real Del Sartre from Formula First days in its very first year, 1987, uh, against the likes of Kelvin Burton, Ben Edwards, for example, and Eugene O'Brien. But uh, more recently concentrating on his son's racing career. Uh, Tom Canning getting stuck in the traffic over the timing line. Uh, Porsche and Mercedes. Nikolai Moller Madsen, number 22, fifth fastest. Jim Plah's Mercedes up to third, there it is. And Jim Plah goes to the inside line down at the Retifilio, goes through, but locks up, scrabbles by. Bit of a wallop of the curb too, as he manages to fight the car out of the chicane. That was the Dennis Fetzer allied racing Porsche that he had to nip up and get past. Mission accomplished, and so now presses on with the job. Lots of drivers taking more and more curb. You can almost hear it, but certainly see it as the cars whack themselves over the uh, curbing, bounce out wide for the next part of the circuit. And there is the Porsche, currently fifth fastest, 22, Nikolai Bola Madsen, Silver Cup champion in years past with the Phoenix Audi, when he shared with Milan Doncha. Very quick, Nikolai Bola Madsen, but has the occasional moment, as was witnessed at the end of last season with a rather crumpled car in the start of the weekend. But uh, it's all harness. Nikolai Bola Madsen, very, very rapid driver indeed, came out of the Audi Sport TT Cup. And you can see the effort being put into this, the way that he's riding the kerbs. The mid-engine Porsche airborne as he launched it through the middle part of the Variante Ascari out wide. But so far, this lap is looking pretty good. We've got an absolute best in the first sector being set by Charlie Fagg. We've got Dean McDonald's sister McLaren for UA coming into the pit lane. And Muller Madsen then down on the Parabolica, turns right. Mullen Madsen to break the beam as he comes through. So Nikolai, sixth. Vincent Beltoise, Beltoise with the LP has just gone fifth fast. It's Tom Canning's up to sixth as well. So uh, with six minutes and change on the clock, there's still a bit of shuffling going on. Now, what happened to number 718 Porsche? Because that should have been going quite quickly. Eight fastest, Max Busnelli. This was Muller Madsen. Only two wheels over the curb for the first part of the chicane. So let's do it with all four. Bang, completely airborne. Launched himself through. Is that track limit abuse? Discuss. Because uh, certainly he's taking the odd liberty. There is Max Busnelli, eight fastest. Hustling on up towards the exit of the Parabolica. So should this be an improvement? It should actually. Two personal bests. So. Number 718 comes over the line and up to fifth fastest then goes Max Busnelli. Not a bad effort at all, that. With, at the moment, the leading nine on the grid covered by just under nine-tenths of a second. Jim Plow being fourth in 87 Mercedes. turns his way up now towards the uh, exit of the Variante Ascari. He's down in the middle sector. Charlie Fagg's last lap started well, didn't finish well. He lost time in sectors two and three. At the bottom of the times currently is Henrik Pedersen. And number four has been up the escape road at turn two, Benjamin Lariche. Drawing attention to himself again in this session, in fact. To the line comes Pla. Personal best sector one, a bit down in sector two. And as he breaks the beam now, Jim Pla fall fastest, not improving the lap time. There is Stefan Lemeray. Stefan Lemeray's Toyota seven fastest now. Last lap time for 36 has been cancelled. That is Antoine Leclerc's uh, Alpine for track limits. Mm. 
Lemare to the line, but is this going to be an improvement? What well, he gained in the first sector, he lost in the middle. So three and a half minutes on the clock. Uh, other drivers being warned about track limits now. Well, Antoine Leclerc is uh, one of them. And then that car having lost the lap time anyway. So you get the warning that uh, in his case, he didn't react to it. And I think that is the car in question. No, that is Antonio Spavoni's Porsche that's come in. Another of the Century Porsche Ticino entries. So can have 718 on one car. What's the next best number for a Porsche? We'll go 911. Christian de Comte doing the driving duties in the first session. And there's been an incident on track between number 17, uh, time in Nabours, and number 126 currently Rafael Villanueva and that was at turn one and it's being looked at apparently by the officials but uh, they've had a coming together uh, Jean-Luc Daria this is the car that Jamie Caroline was very impressive in in the first session he comes down towards the Parabolica now with probably one more lap that he can just about ring out of the session yellow flag currently in the first sector as well so that might compromise life. Nope, sector is now green again. Yellow flag rescinded. As up to the line comes Jean-Luc Daria. So 22nd the car was. 19th it now is. An improvement on that lap. So Daria's Mercedes goes quicker. Less than a lap time now left in the session for him. Uh, the other end of the times. Wilfried Casalbon 40th. Max Trasoli way, way down as well. So too is Luke Ibanez, because I would have thought that Ibanez uh, would have been better than 16th. Mercedes was, uh, on more than one occasion, a race-winning car for Ibanez and uh, Xavier Llovaras last year, but not at the moment being able to replicate the pace. Other Mercedes going quite rapidly, so there's something afoot here. More work to be done for the NM racing team. Ibanez riding the curbs. And actually, this lap could be the one, couldn't it? Not necessarily for pole, but certainly for an improvement, because you can see that the uh, sectors are going green, so you're looking at personal bests. Some bail for the pits. Ibanez for the line. Oh. Fizzled away in the last sector, didn't it? So 16th still for Luki Banyas. So he starts his last lap of the session. Whether he finishes it on the track or heads for the pit lane, we will see. So these drivers, these times, setting the grid for the second race, tomorrow's race, is 88. Timothy Bure rattles over the kerb as well. Bure 25th fastest. Again, ordinarily, you'd say he's a quick driver. He's one that should be up near the front, but it's not really happening for him at the moment. Timothy Bure then now heading towards the Parabolica. Turns in, flag is out, so it's the end of the session for him. Could be an improvement for the Mercedes because you've got two personal bests there being indicated. Up towards the timing line, Timothy Bure, 25th at the start of this lap and as the flag goes out, again, he lost out markedly in the last sector, so he stays 25th in the times. So there, number 20 is obviously not going to go back out again with the flag out, but that's the car that Dennis Fetzer was driving in that second session, and it was 26th. The 
bulk of the time as really we've had now. I think um, in many cases drivers are either abandoning their session or doing an in-lap. Very, very few finding much more time. There is the possibility of an uh, improvement coming out of 992, Nicola Stutzinger, because there are personal bests, but the car is quite a long way down anyway, 34. So even if there is an improvement, it might only be a, a row or two. And Stutzinger, three places gained, so moves him up to the inside of the 16th row of the grid, just ahead of Jagish Gedix at BMW. So qualifying then at an end. Nikolai Moller-Madsen, only nine. Bit surprising, that, relative to the pace that, uh, that Joel Sturm was able to uh, sort out in his session. So, Dean McDonald topping the times in number 32 for United Autosports, the McLaren, and uh, Dean is with Gemma Scott. Dean, once you got that first spot, you were unbeatable in that session. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you very much. I think um, it was always going to be tricky with the traffic, um, but the team did an amazing job telling me where the gap was. Um, and I think if it wasn't for that, I don't think we would have been on pole today. Um, so I just got to say a massive thank you to them. Um, for all their efforts all weekend and giving me the car that was able to go for pole. So overall, I'm really happy. A great start to the season. Yeah, mega start to the season. I didn't think I'd be saying that I'd be pole at Monza in my life, but yeah, it's a nice feeling. Well done, fantastic. Thank you. So Dean McDonald then, a very happy man indeed. And uh, the pace that the McLarens are showing is looking uh, very, very encouraging. However, with so many cars and traffic to factor in as well and different pace of some drivers, I think we're in for two very lively races. Let's just quickly have a look at uh, how the times are at the end of Q2. Dean McDonald ahead of Ricardo Perra by just 61 thousandths of a second. Charlie Fagg third, so a 1-3 for United Autosports and the McLarens in that session. Jim Pla fourth ahead of Max Busnelli and Vincent Beltoise. Stefan Lemeray seventh ahead of Tom Canning and then Nikolai Mollemadsen and Greg Gilbert and Akil Rabindra. All quick drivers, but something has to give, so they get sort of pushed down the order a little bit, but they're ahead of Antonio Spavoni, Hugo Chevalier and Tarman Nabours. Uh, looking further down, you've got Jean-Luc Daria uh, ending up in 16th, ahead of uh, Luigi Bagna, Antoine Leclerc, ex-GT1 racer, uh, only 18th, ahead of former champ car racer Joel Camathias, and go further and further and further and further down. Ralph Kellerners, great sports car racer in his time, Eurosport broadcaster Ralph Kellerners, uh, Quite a long way back as well come the end of that second part of qualifying. Agish Gedik ahead of the Benjamins, Lariche and Ricci. And uh, Rafael Villanueva too with some work to be done. And actually, although Anthony Hodson's session looked like it was starting quite well, he doesn't end up all that high up the order. Only 40th in the end uh, of the 20 minutes with Henrik Pedersen's Aston Martin rounding out the times then. So that is how we look at the end of the GT4 qualifying session. Quick look back at the best bits of qualifying with this very, very busy circuit getting the uh, session underway. 007, the street art racing. Aston Martin being one of those cars out early doors, but the United Auto Sports McLarens straight away looking as though they meant business and very much in Q2. Uh, the cars with very good pace. Off the road, rally crossed uh, Paul Theisgens with the 007 Aston. Number 10, Porsche of Ricardo de Opera, uh, won trading places. Off the road went number 32, but Dean McDonald was still able to recover and go fastest at the very end of that session. So McLaren topped the times in Q2 for GT4. Uh, two races here at Monza this weekend, and the first of them coming up this afternoon. We'll see you for that. For now, for qualifying, goodbye. <laughs>